Hey guys, hope you're well. Um, I'm really bored, so I just wanted to do a chat on um, energy systems and conditioning um, because I feel like a lot of strength and conditioning coaches uh, have a very st strong grasp on the strength side, excuse the pun, uh, and not strong in the conditioning side. And then I'm always seeing arguments like I saw one the other day that mass versus tempo and, um, and etc. And um, I wanted to go over a couple of things and my thoughts behind um, some of this. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is in regards to more about team sports, so where we have um, all three energy systems are quite important. And uh, when, when I think about what occurs in a game, if we take out the tactical, if we take out the uh, psychological, and we take out the technical and skills, what's the most important thing is usually on the physical point of side within a game, who wins these high intensity moments within a game? Okay, so who can produce the high power outputs in the competition exercise? So the first thing we need to do is reverse engineer the sport, find out what movements are important in your game. So say we're using today an example rugby, rugby league, and we know that obviously straight line running is important, um, multi-directional movement is important, and um, contact, grappling, wrestle, um, and yeah, are really, really important. So just using the principle of specificity, obviously it's very important that we um, train agility, speed, and the ability to hit people really, really hard in a lactic fashion at training. That's a really important thing. If we can improve our power outputs in that, we're more likely to win these high intensity, um, these high intensity moments in the game. So let's just first, we're putting all those things into our training program because that's gonna have a direct uh, influence um, on our training. Now, this, another thing that's really important is obviously the ability to repeat this over and over in the game. Um, so outside of um, a lactic capacity, what we've got left is um, aerobic, and, um, aerobic and lactic training. Um, and, then, and then this has to be in, in the movements that occur. So we've got, we've got um, things like straight line running, um, contact work, grapple work, and um, multi-directional work. So that be the kind of things we have to look after in our conditioning. Now, I see a lot of arguments on low intensity methods versus high intensity methods. And when we look at low intensity methods, um, I consider low intensity things um, underneath that aerobic thresholds, so you're not really dipping into it. Your heart rate's gonna be a lot lower than high intensity stuff. You're over that, that threshold, um, and you generally have to break it down into intervals so that you can recover a bit and go, uh, go again. And, Obviously, that's a powerful stimulus as well on the, um, on the energy system adaptations. Um, one thing I want to point out, okay, so when, when, when we're thinking about the adaptations that can happen um, from conditioning, we've got things that are uh, central adaptations that occur, um, and then we've got peripheral adaptations that occur, and then things like um, stroke volume and um, power, oh, sorry, the amount of uh, blood the heart can push out is a central adaptation. And you look at things like volume in the blood, the amount of red blood cells in the blood. Um, and we're looking at things like uh, capillarization um, around the muscles, uh, mitochondria density, uh, different um, levels of enzymes. That could be aerobic enzymes, could be lactic enzymes, depending on the type of training we're doing. And then we've got the ability to remove waste, okay? And now these different adaptations occur depending on the different intensities that we do at training. So rather than looking at low intensity as high intensity, understand that if we tick off all these different things using low intensity and high intensity methods, we're probably going to get a, a, a good spectrum of adaptations that are going to be beneficial um, for us to be able to repeat this ability um, in the game. Now, what we need to do but then is work out, okay, if we're doing all this power strength work, we're doing all this team training, where can I put low intensity methods in? Where can I put high intensity methods in? Now, if you have a 12 week pre season, to me, it makes sense to start off with uh, more low intensity methods with a little bit more volume because that probably means um, the high intensity stuff is going to be a lot harder on the body. Okay? Um, so, so, if you have a bit of a base of low intensity stuff to begin with, um, that gives us somewhere to move up for intensity throughout the pre season. Uh, and uh, for some reason people were scared to go into this low intensity, they always want to start high intensity and I don't really understand that. Because I think you can get some powerful um, uh, adaptations using low intensity methods. 
I'll give an example. In 2002, the German cycling team won the um, it's a four minute event, and they won the uh, gold medal, I believe. Um, and then 90% of the training was with low intensity methods, and that's for a four minute event. 90%, and they're probably training four hours a day, if not more. Now, obviously, we're not a pure uh, endurance athlete. High power outputs is really, really, really important. Um, but we can take a few takeaways from that, that you can train at these low intensity methods and still get some pretty good um, uh, adaptations if we know how to put them in. Um, I've, I've used in the past, and I know a few other strength coaches I've spoken to is working underneath the hour every threshold and doing some longer intervals initially. So we can do a four or five minute intervals um, at 85% of mass, which is roughly our aerobic threshold, and then break it up with a minute or so here. And that's a powerful way to, to raise your anaerobic threshold. Um, and then, then we can look at things like movement efficiency, which is really, really important. And this is why a lot of people are like an extensive tempo at the moment. Um, this, this, everyone's having these arguments like tempos, um, people starting to understand the value of tempo um, because a lot of people say to me, oh, tempo's uh, it's too easy on the body, the intensity is too low. Well, if you compare it to, say, our traditional mass, yes, the heart rate will be low, the intensity will be lower. However, if you look at the neuromuscular power output, it's going to be a lot higher because you look working, if you're working at 70% of max speed, you're probably working at 6 to 6.5 six meters per second. Um, compared to mass, if you're working at, say, 120%, you might be working at 5.5 meters per second. Okay? So this extensive tempo stuff is really good um, because it's a low intensity, still going to drive up some aerobic adaptations, and you're getting a higher neuromuscular output and make it more robust to running. The thing you have to watch with that is the amount of high speed meters that you uh, probably get at training. You have to be smart about how you put that in. Um, I like things like multi-directional tempo and things like that because as we said before, um, in regards to conditioning, what's important is your anaerobic threshold, your VO2 max and economy of movement. And that's economy of movement, not just straight line running, shuffle, decelerate, um, um, uh, whether it's crossover step, all these type of movements you can do in a multi-directional fashion and then that can intensify into small side of the games later on. Now, with the high intensity stuff, I don't, I think if you, you know, there's a lot of research out there that shows that it's really quickly that you can get these adaptations, um, whereas the low intensity stuff might, may take a bit longer, it's because they're, they're targeting more um, central adaptations, but even though they take longer, once you have them, they stick with you longer. So, if you're doing high power outputs to training, in your, in your team sport stuff, you're doing it in the gym, you're doing it in speed work, you're gonna work out where you can put this high interval um, training stuff into your program. Be smart about how you do it. Progress through the intensities to get there, earn the right to use that, okay? And then when we get there, I, I know a lot of people, this is, this is nothing against mass. I think I've used mass, I still do use mass, but just remember the intensities you're working at mass when you're at 100%. Most athletes will be at four and a half meters per second. If you're 120%, you're probably at five and a half meters per second. In a game, those speeds are probably not what's getting you tired, okay? It's more the contact, the get down, the get up, the deceleration, the change of direction. So don't be scared to develop your own drills, okay? When you want to get this lactic energy system working, okay? Do what, you can replicate what gets you tired in the games, so that way, um, you get these lactic adaptations. And um, another note I just want to, uh, want to say in regards to the amount of emphasis you put on your aerobic energy system compared to your lactic energy system. The aerobic energy system is much more trainable. Um, I believe Joel Jameson and Vladimir Asurin um, said lactic energy system you can improve 20 to 30%. Don't quote me on that. And your aerobic energy system you can work that double. You can improve that double. So it's a pretty good bang for your buck. So if you can put these low intensity methods around your high intensity stuff, you can still get some really good adaptations so you can recover from these high, um, these power outputs. And I remember reading an article back in the day, and it's always stuck with me from Lyle McDonald, and he said a good aerobic energy system is a good anaerobic, um, at least a good anaerobic performance. Because if you can improve your anaerobic threshold, that means you can improve your power output before getting tired. And then when you do get tired and you are using a lot of this lactic energy system. When you're recovering from that, it's your aerobic energy system that removes this waste, okay? So, don't be scared to have some polarization in training early, okay? Because there's, um, you can have more high intensity stuff, some low intensity stuff, 
build up to the high intensity stuff, put the high intensity stuff um, in the appropriate ways so that your body can recover, you can get adaptations that you're chasing so you can optimize on field performance. Um, so use everything, just be smart about how you do it. Um, I went down rabbit hole a bit deep there, but I uh, hope you got something from that.